Bryson DeChambeau wins the 2024 U.S. Open Championship, making this his second major and second U.S. Open. Very excited on a couple of levels. Uh, first off, on a personal level, I got to spend some time with Bryson when he dabbled in long drive. Actually, the first time I ever met him was the Monday of his U.S. Open victory at Wingfoot. Coincidence? I think not. No, I'm just kidding. But um, he then dabbled in long drive, broke his hand, uh, and then joined Liv. And I don't remember the exact order of all those events, but uh, hit a low point. And it wasn't until the week before the green bar last year uh, that he started to come out of that. And the big thing that changed was he switched to a driver called Crank. And Crank has historically been a club that a lot of long drive guys have used um, but the big thing about the crank driver is there's more bulge and roll or more curve on the club face. And what Bryson realized is the faster he started swinging it, you need more curve on the club face to help offset the gear effect. And what I mean by that is if you have golfer A who swings at 110 miles an hour and you have golfer B who swings at 130 miles an hour, if that driver is exactly the same and you hit it slightly off the toe, okay, in the same exact spot, the golfer that swings it faster, that ball is going to curve more, okay? That's what we call gear effect. And so golfer B or the faster golfer needs more curve on that club face to help offset that. Uh, and I think ultimately this was a question Bryson was after for a while. Uh, obviously, we heard he, you know, his displeasure with certain driver heads on the market. Um, but ultimately, you know, he's been playing really good. He played well at the Masters, finished runner-up at the PGA Championship, so I'm not surprised he got the W. The other thing this does is it extends his major championship exemption out by five years. So he's exempt now for an additional five years into the Masters, the British Open, the PGA Championship. Obviously, he gets the 10-year U.S. Open exemption. Um, on another note, super excited for my teaching partner, Dana Dahlquist. I've uh, been close to Dana for the last 20 years. We've been teaching together uh, for about 15 of that. And uh, Dana's been a part of Bryson's team for about a year. Super excited uh, to, to see him be a part of this. Obviously, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it's the player that does it. But I'm sure Dana gave some really good insight along the way. Um, all in all, it was a great day for golf. Uh, hopefully, this will be the, the gap that uh, sort of bridges everything together uh, between Liv and the PJ Tour. And overall, I think that was one of the best majors that we saw uh, going back for a while now. So very excited. Uh, let's dive into the swing. I think this is a great model that a lot of you at home can learn from. All right, so starting with the setup, uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is, um, and you've heard Bryson talk about this, this is something we teach over at hitbombs.com, uh, we love to see the lead elbow at the target, so that is lead shoulder internal rotation, trail elbow pointed at the right rib cage. Now, the interesting thing about this is Bryson does this and still maintains a very weak grip, okay? A lot of times when golfers turn that lead elbow towards the target, uh, the grip creeps a little bit onto the stronger side, um, but this is a perfect case study to where uh, it doesn't have to do that. So Bryson has described this as a uh, lead elbow at the target, weak left hand, and he almost feels like that kind of locks everything in. Now, uh, just a, a very simple observation. Uh, it does look like his, his right foot maybe is turned in just a little bit more than it historically has been. I got to talk to Dana about that to see if that's by design or anything. Um, but one of the other things that you'll see is, is Bryson has a very upright, uh, club shaft at address. Okay. So uh, typically the higher the hands are at address, it's going to make it easier to actually draw the ball. Okay. Um, the higher the hands, typically the face will point more to the right and play a big role in getting that ball to start right and eventually curve back. Um, one of the things I like about uh, that high hands is it does create some space between his pelvis and his hands. Ultimately, that's going to help determine how far he stands from the ball. One of the things we've observed from the Bombers is, is in order to rotate, you need to have more space to be able to actually move through. If you get too close to it, a lot of times uh, the body will start to compensate around the lack of space. Now, uh, one of the other things I, I like that he does, and you see other guys like Ricky Fowler do this, is at address, 
uh, he starts by hovering the driver. Okay, so you can see that um, he starts with that club off the ground. In my opinion, I think it's a great way to, to get the club swinging back. Uh, a lot of times, golfers will do this if they have a lowering move in the backswing. And what I mean by that is if you watch his takeaway, you can kind of see how the driver actually starts to, to go down just a little bit. Okay, so if I play that again, you can kind of see how the driver gets lower. And so ultimately, by setting up with that club higher at address, that's a great way to offset that. Uh, other than that, everything's pretty good. You know, I think the, the alignment of the armpits over the, the knees and uh, balls at the feet is, is pretty close to where it needs to be, um, give or take. Uh, overall, I think, you know, this is a great model if you want to draw the ball. And, and remember, if you want to draw the ball, higher hands will definitely play to your advantage. All right, so it's been really interesting looking at uh, Bryson's journey. So when he got on tour, Bryson had a very centered pivot. There wasn't much lateral motion in the swing. Um, and then as he got into long drive, because you, you he was trying to create more speed, you started seeing a little bit more lateral motion. And uh, now we, we kind of see in between, right? Obviously, uh, Bryson has so much more speed in the tank if he wants it, but uh, he, he's really dialing everything back to, to make sure that it's, it's still manageable to go play in tournament golf, which I love. Um, so off the ball, one of the things you'll see is you do see a slight upload, okay? So you see a slight up into the right motion with his head, okay? And then we also see a little lateral motion there, okay? And I would say, give or take, uh, at this point, um, his pelvis is pretty much done moving loudly, okay? And what you'll see is as he moves to the top, you'll start to see that right hip moving back and around, almost as if uh, it was going to be moving back towards that player behind him, okay? Um, as that happens, you can see the right leg is losing flex. Uh, this is really important if we want to allow the pelvis to turn. Um, this is the probably the biggest fundamental issue I see in amateur golfers is, is they don't understand how to turn their pelvis. They don't understand how to allow that trail leg to straighten. And the byproduct of that is a lot of times these golfers end up too far on their trail side. So you can see that um, Bryson has returned his pelvis in between the lines that he started. Okay, so that's what we call a recentering move. So he went to the right initially, and then he recentered his body as he went to the top. Now, the benefit of a huge pelvis turn is the shoulder turn is also going to be massive as well. So um, definitely frees up the body to rotate. You can see how he, he's let his head rotate a little bit. Uh, so there's nothing restricting this motion here. Now, um, one of the other things you'll see as he moves back from the face on view is he keeps the club very wide. Okay, so there is zero reset going back. Okay, P3, very under cocked. And then at the top, there's definitely not much load in the shaft, okay? Um, this is something we see from some of the best drivers out there. You know, Scotty Scheffler, Tom Kim. These guys are very wide. You don't see too many good drivers of the golf ball having a lot of early hinge. In my opinion, that disrupts the, the, the flow of the motion. Um, but overall, I think this is a pretty textbook face-on move. You can see as the trail leg extends, he lets his lead leg work back behind the ball, maybe seeing that lead heel come off the ground ever so slightly. And if we switch over to the down the line view, one of the things we'll see is as Bryson throws the club back, he does a great job keeping everything in front of him, okay? So his hands aren't sucking in. A uh, club in hand path is working up in the in front of the chest. So if we stop him right at P3, give or take, okay, and we put a line on, on his hands, uh, you can see that they're much more in front of the chest, okay? Very similar to Rory. So both Rory and Bryson, they take the club and hands up more in front of him, and that will allow them to actually drop it back and in through the transition. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see this, this trail leg is definitely losing flex, okay? So it starts with a little bit of flex. He moves back. That right leg extends. Ultimately, this is creating a massive pelvis turn. Um, 
Most golfers at home, especially on a recreational level, uh, their mobility is not great. So we cannot restrict the lower body. We got to allow that to move, uh, which will help the upper body turn as well. And ultimately, uh, by creating a little bit of a bigger range of motion, not only are we going to be able to create more speed, uh, but ultimately it's going to play a role in that recentering move. Right now, as he winds his body up, it's going to help him get back to his center, which is going to play a role in getting to his lead side at an early time. Now, um, going back to the hand path, right? He keeps it in front of him as he goes back. And as he reaches the top, one of the things you'll start to see, especially from this uh, face on view, is we'll start to see this trail elbow, trail shoulder work back behind him, okay? And a lot of golfers hate this move. And I'm here to tell you, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. As we see this right elbow work back and behind him, okay, one of the things we'll start to see is that's going to create a stretch. And the result of that is the hand path is now going to start to work a little bit down and in. Okay, so you can see the hands as he starts to rotate the lower body, they aren't jetting out right away. They work down and in, okay, which is what you hear a lot of golfers refer to as dropping the club in the slot. But remember, he's doing that while he's still rotating. So by P5, he's almost back to square with his knee. So there is some lower body rotation in there. Um, in my opinion, a lot of people misinterpret that move by thinking that it's a, a hand pull down move. Okay, it's not a pull down move the hands. It's as the arms work back and you change directions, the way the spine and the shoulders work is what starts to drop those hands a little bit in. And as I mentioned, Bryson is someone that loves to draw the golf ball. Uh, so by getting that hand path moving down and in, ultimately that's going to start to shift this swing direction a little bit more towards the right. Okay, so that's uh, basically how he creates that right swing direction is uh, through that trail arm movement. Now, um, going into impact, once again, he has body rotation. I think where people get scared of body rotation is, is they think if I rotate, my hands are going to shift out into downswing. And that is the case. Uh, but obviously, um, you know, for someone who understands how to manage their hand path accordingly, um, that doesn't have to always be the case, right? You could still uh, have rotation and, and get your swing direction out to the right. Um, now, as we progress into the downswing to face on view, you can see there's not much lateral motion, okay? So, so you know, a little bit, but ultimately, if we look at his, his uh, hips relative to his pelvis, for the most part, they're staying pretty much between these lines. I know there was a little lateral motion earlier, okay? Um, now, one of the things you will see at impact, if we were critiquing this move for speed purposes, now granted, this guy just won the US Open, okay? Um, but all I'm trying to point out here is uh, when he was in long drive mode, one of the things that we saw was we saw this lead leg a little bit straighter and back at impact. Okay, so at this point, uh, that left leg was a, a little bit straighter. Um, like I said, it, 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 it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to play better golf. The guy just won the U.S. Open. I think uh, we all wanted to wake up today being Bryson DeChambeau. Um, but just pointing out that that's one of those differences. And if you look at this lead elbow, and I'm going to actually go back and comment on this relative to the, the setup you can see that that elbow is pointing at the target, okay? Same position we started in at address. Now, that's the benefit. By having that elbow at the target, that's going to help create some stability through impact, okay? So as we play this down the line view, okay, you can see how stable that face is moving. And a lot of that is in part to uh, that lead elbow position. So he, he's maintaining that lead elbow. He's not letting it roll over. Um, I've heard Bryson... I describe this a lot in various different videos, um, and as it progresses further, you know, you know, obviously at some point with a driver, especially someone who has a little bit more in to out swing direction, there's going to be some roll on the face. Um, but I mean, what this guy has done in the last couple months for golf has been truly amazing. I think um, you know what you're seeing from Bryson on the course now is, is things that I saw with Bryson behind the scenes. Everyone always asked me, you know, what's Bryson like? And, 
Um, exactly what you're seeing now on the course is exactly how he was off the course. I remember him, you know, taking young kids to dinner at the World Long Drive Championship. So Bryson is a good guy, and it, it's you know I'm happy to see him turn things around. Um, the takeaway for this swing, okay, is when we're looking at the difference of maximum speed versus playable speed, I would focus in on this lateral movement, okay? So obviously he does have some lateral motion, um, but it's not a ton, right? It's not as much lateral motion as we would see from Kyle Berkshire. It's just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. But the key is at the top of the swing, you have to make sure that we get this pelvis back to the center, whether you're moving a ton or you're moving a little, the key is to get your pelvis back to the center and make sure that you're winding that pelvis up uh, in terms of creating speed. Um, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think this uh, this is one analysis I've been wanting to do for a while and I was waiting for the time. I almost pulled the trigger on this one at the PGA Championship, uh, but I'm super glad I held off. Um, if you're interested in getting more content from me or Dana Dahlquist, head over to hitbombs.com. We have a complete swing blueprint on there uh, that takes you uh, from the setup to the finish and everything in between. We appreciate all the support. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Hitbombs.com.